All right, uh, thank you uh, for joining us on this special E4M webinar, uh, which is on building OTT brands through personalized conversational messaging, powered by Gupsha. I want to put in a little bit of context before I introduce my esteemed speakers today. As we know, today's subscribers want uh, OTT brands to meet them where they are and make the entire journey from purchase uh, uh, to you know, the final product as easy and convenient as possible. This is why uh, many Indian subscribers are turning to messaging platforms for support. So uh, to discuss all this and more, we have uh, with us today, uh, Girish uh, Dibash, Dibashyam, I'm so sorry, VP Strategy, DocuBay. We have uh, Kinari Dave, Deputy Vice President, Product and Innovation, Shimaro Me. Uh, Lokesh Chauhan, Chief Technology Officer, Eros Now. Omkar Shinde, SVP Head, Product Digital Business, Sony Lib. Uh, Satyajit uh, Devakran Nair, Senior General Manager, Digital Manorma Max. Uh, we have Suryadeep Basia, CEO, Oho Gujarati. Tarun Sahni, Head of Partnerships Global Shorts TV, Sanjoy Roy, co founder and CEO, Ask Sid, a Gapshap company. And the session chair for this webinar is uh, Vineet Shah, GM Madison. I would hand it over to Vineet from here to take on the discussion. Thank you again for joining us. Thanks a lot, Ovel. Thank you for a quick introduction. Uh, let me start the proceedings with uh, the most used phases in the last two years considering it's a webinar uh, firstly am i audible and is my screen visible and now i guess we can start considering we've said these two words and we can proceed now so uh, i would first want to set some context for the audiences with a quick glimpse on the ott culture my panelist over here as you rightly pointed out ohil uh, all OTT experts, they eat, sleep, drink, and definitely breathe OTT. However, for audiences, I wish to cover uh, what are the key contents that we'll be talking in the next 90 minutes. And this will be largely related to the OTT culture, how it began, what has been the pandemic impact on the consumption of OTT and where it is currently standing, how it will be shaping up for the future. So uh, I'm sure a lot of you would know, but just to kind of brush up, OTT culture began in India in 2008 with uh, a platform called Big Flix, which was by Reliance Entertainment. And post that, soon after in 2013, there was a leap in terms of, uh, say, the mainstream platforms like Hotstar, uh, Sony Live, and Ditto TV, which is again, uh, you know, formally uh, known as uh, as which is now known as a Z5, formerly known as Zitto TV, started in GC content as a catch-up TV for a lot of users. Now, uh, post-2016, when Geo launched, uh, the entire ecosystem changed considering the video consumption grew multifolds on back of the affordable data services. And with that, user behavior and a captive audience is available. Global giants like Amazon Prime Video and Netflix introduce exclusive content to Indian audiences. Say content like uh, Sacred Games and Mirzapur, Family Man were much ahead of the curve for the Indian folks. And now OTT was much more than a catch-up TV. So today as this revolution is forming as a mainstream media vehicle where there are more than 45 uh, OTT platforms in India and it definitely, uh, the unique users across all these platforms definitely contribute to more than half of the internet population in India. Uh, largely, the big five contribute to the eruption of this medium. So if I have to name them, say, Hotstar, Z5, Sony Live, Voot, MX Player, are the big five bases, the monthly active users they have, and uh, the kind of time spent that you can see on these OTT platforms. While there are definitely a big growth in the regional content uh, uh, dissemination platforms as well. So platforms like SunNext, Hoi Choi, Aha, uh, Oho Gujarati, Manoma Max, to the regional content consumption pattern also. While OTT platforms largely grew on the back of GEC content, which is nothing but your daily soaps and uh, entertainment and sports, 
tenfold original content which these uh, platforms started producing, creating, and disseminating has def is definitely responsible for making this wave of an OTT now into a tsunami. So while today larger viewership is led by AVOD as a format, on back of the exclusive content, one can definitely expose. Uh, ex one can definitely expect the growth in SWOT business will be going much more faster than what AWOD actually grew the business for. And there's a definite growth of 25 to 40 percent across multiple OTT platforms in the way content uh, in the way content was consumed pre-pandemic and now post-pandemic. So almost 20, 30 percent audiences have increased, and there's a definite 30 percent increase in the time spent as well. Uh, across all these OTT platforms. And hence, uh, there will be a lot of injection of content that is responsible for this as well. So with the original content uh, coming in, it's also resulted in audience shifting to connected TV forms here, TV or mobile viewing. Now that is largely on back of uh, the exclusive shows which are not there on TV and a user wants to co-view the same way they watch TV. So uh, I, I can still watch that on mobile, but if I want to watch co-view with my family or friends, connected TV has become the next big thing. While it still contributes to 12, 10 to 12% of the, uh, the internet population from a unique visitor's point of view, it is still substantially going well and uh, it has grown by uh, easy 35 to 40, 50% in the last one year. So it's a testimony that uh, connected TV with the kind of original content that we have will only keep on going in the next two, three years. So estimated uh, by 2025, we can definitely expect connected TV unique users to go up to 100 plus million users. Now, as we speak, uh, there are platforms like Amazon Prime Video, or uh, even say their new uh, end to end, say something like a book my show streams have launched TVOD, which is nothing but a transactional video on demand as a buying currency. Now, what it does is I typically can buy, I can rent the content, uh, I can consume it, and I can move out of the platform. There is no wedlock as such that I have to buy a monthly or an annual subscription to kind of consume the content and stick to it. So that is a new form that is coming, which is uh, which is an evolve, uh, which is evolving to the AWOD and SWOT that we've been seeing till now. Uh, much more than that, uh, even there have been interactive formats within OTT content consumption that has come out. So today there are interactive content pieces released on OTT, which is enhancing the overall viewing experience. I'm sure a lot of you would have seen uh, or viewed the latest content piece, uh, which was uh, Runway Singh with Bear Grylls, uh, and where users were given an option to select uh, a lot of things that Runway Singh would do in that entire content piece starting with what uh, tools he carries or what roadmap he follows to his destination or even what he eats. So this is the kind of media adoption that is definitely happening. And in future, OTT platforms may have an alternate ending to a content also. Like that can be a definite possibility where uh, your favorite character dies in one of the endings and you can select that he doesn't die and there could be an alternate ending to it as well. So that is the stage where OTT platforms and the kind of uh, tech that is enabled is moving to. I can definitely assure that this will be an exciting discussion, uh, you know, to know what's moving in the minds and uh, behind the doors of these OTT houses. And uh, with that, I would want to shoot my first question. So Omkar, this is for you. Omkar represents uh, Sony Lim, one of the big five OTT platforms. The question is, what as per you has led that shift in content consumption pattern on OTT pre and post pandemic? Uh, hi everyone. Uh, so it, uh, before the before the pandemic hit us, we were a different version of Sunil, and uh, uh, around two years back, uh, we transformed ourselves and uh, with a subscription focus with a lot of premium content also that was onboarded and produced by us. So I think uh, the, uh, the compulsion of staying at home and uh, you know there was nothing to do at that time. So I think that, that led to users opting for you know, consuming more uh, of content on OTT platforms because there was a wide choice there. Uh, thankfully, during that time, uh, we had launched and transformed uh, Sonylib to a subscription focus. And uh, from a you know 0.8 million kind of a subscription base that we had at that point, 
we are now at 8.7 you know so this huge phenomenal growth that we've seen is during this pandemic uh, where users have chosen for more exclusive content and original content i think that is what is driven uh, that shift so this will be largely on come on the back of the uh, original content if i have to put it that way or it could be attributed to sports also as well so sports has always been a driver <coughs> but but for us uh, uh, from a from a subscription perspective also and sport business perspective also original content is the one that has given us the biggest win perfect I, i'm sure uh, scam would have definitely contributed a lot to that that was a game changer that was a game changer so are we seeing any shift in consumption of gc and sports or as well uh, say pre to post pandemic because while ott uh, while originals are the clear winner but is there any shift in gc and sports as well definitely i think uh, the habit is is now moved to ott uh, the consumption in terms of the minutes watched uh, per user has also skyrocketed uh, uh, in ott's favor so i think overall from a habit formation also as well as the consumption and time spent uh, we are seeing a huge shift towards ott great great so while i believe gc and sports have resulted in growth on ott's and definitely original is coming in uh this is a question to lokesh from eros now and uh, kinavi from shimalu what is the growth road map for platform which has movies typically from say your 90s and 2000s as primary content when you may also have a lot of snackable web shows along with it please first after you can okay. so hi uh, thanks uh... Uh, for the invite okay so i would like to answer it uh, a little different i think uh, the indian users have had the affinity towards a lot of regional content right True. so and we uh, over the lockdown i think uh, that need and that affinity has kind of accelerated so if you see all of us put together we would have about say 400 to 600 hours of indian original content way back in 2017 now all of us are sure. sitting at upwards of you know 3000 hours of indian original content so the consumer preference the consumer uh, taste etc has moved and it's moved faster than our expectations and that's where uh, we are uh, sitting yes so we have a lot of regional uh, we have a lot of classics and uh, the idea is to add more content uh, which the consumer has affinity towards so i have a follow up question but i would want to hear lokesh as well so sure, by represented us now one of the older one of the most <laughs> what you would say prominent across the globe otts from indian context uh, the way i would have like to answer is that we always knew there is going to be an upshift for viewership but the pandemic accelerated it tremendously it kind of uh, allowed us to understand better of how consumption patterns are evolving with the flow of data that was coming in and we have used that to you know invest in more web se- uh, web series and shows specifically to understand how we can cater to different geographies and different age groups better specifically that has uh, been the approach from start uh, we know that having a great library of content which has a great rewatch value is always going to be our strong point uh, we're not like a sport focused uh, ott player so yeah that will not be our strength uh, but movies have great what you would say attachment for indian diaspora and that's where i believe we bank upon so location can know if if i understand it well there is a definite mix of uh, movies as a content that's con- getting consumed on the platform as well as the snackable content that's also there what would be a ratio between the two uh, if i have to understand because again while i understand that uh, people want to catch up on movies that's a definite trend but uh, they are still looking out for a lot of original content across multiple platforms so is the hunt of uh, coming and watching new content on the platform uh, driving more users or is the movies that you have is driving more users so i think uh, 
you know, ask if I have to answer on behalf of Shamaru, uh, for us, the way we are present or the way our offering is present, we have both kinds of users, right? So we have the classics uh, catalog, etc. We do Bollywood premiers as well. Like until last year, we promised one new movie every week, right? So we have those global audiences, uh, you know, funneling down to us and uh, our focus for last year has been Gujarati and for in which we released original content. So that does for our customers or that cohort of customers is coming to us for more uh, exciting new age content in that genre specific. So we've kept our regional strategy in focus. We've grown Gujarati over a year and a half and you'll see us growing more such, uh, you know, language verticals going further. Both with movies and original content, I would say. So it is an equal mix for us. Hmm. I concur with the Kennedy. Um, the fact of the matter is, in certain parts of the world, we see more affinity for original shows, while others show more what you would say to be watch intent for movies. So we missed in both. That's a good trend to know because while the original content is coming up, there is no time for the movies that are there on the platforms and uh, the older ones that people still want to relish. So it's it's a good thing to to understand. Now, uh, in, in, in the current context, OTT platforms have been announcing slate of 2030 content, original content pieces to be released in the span of next two years, which is quite big. Easily one, two pieces of content every month, which is even say uh, at times much more than a new movie coming in. So this is again a question to Umkar that is India finally ready to pay for content in a larger sense, considering uh, people uh, as in the slate of uh, content that is coming out, it's all going to be behind the paywall. So uh, we are seeing a very positive trend. Uh, UPI launched sometime in 2016. Uh, and since then, it's only growing. I think uh, in the last two years, it has grown even uh, faster. So uh, even from our, uh, you know, the subscriptions and the subscriber numbers that I mentioned earlier, I think uh, it, while it is still from a from an India scale perspective, it's at a nascent stage, but uh, I think it's growing very fast. So users' uh, willingness or intent to pay for content is definitely on the rise. So as I, as I initially pointed out that uh, the wave will become a tsunami with the original contents and that's how every uh, that's how you as a one of the big five guys would be thinking of. Absolutely. And, and that's where our investments are also. So uh, I think the big drivers for us are uh, our original and exclusive content and sports. So I think in, in both those areas, uh, you know, we are uh, focusing a lot. Oh, that's that's good to know. So, can we safely assume that uh, with SWOT picking up, uh, as mentioned by you, with the kind of niche content that platforms like DocuBay and Shorts TV have, a uh, question for Girish and Tarun, are we expecting the growth much aggressively now in terms of viewership, considering people are ready to pay, uh, the big fives are talking about it openly, saying that, okay, this is the way, this is the back of, uh, as a on back of the original content, you would see more subscribers coming in. So do you agree with that, uh, Girish and Tarun, uh, from your platform point of view, considering you guys have a lot of niche content that comes out? Sure. Uh, no, I think uh, definitely when it comes to habit creation, the big fives sure. have uh, created the habit of paying online for video content. And uh, once that habit is created, uh, it just opens the door for pushing uh, more types of content uh, uh, into the household. And uh, that uh, has definitely helped, uh, helped us where uh, today more and more people are willing to pay. And uh, the other thing that probably, uh, uh, you know, has worked is that uh, uh, while most of the platforms, uh, the big five uh, are focusing on uh, fiction content primarily and uh, uh, fiction originals. And uh, uh, somewhere uh, in the last two to three years, we are seeing that a lot of customers are now, uh, they, they, 
they are feeling some fatigue with the homogeneous nature of some of the web series uh, that you know it's the same i mean some of the some of them are on similar topics and uh, they want something fresh and new and i think somewhere uh, you know a platform like docubay uh, has created a space for itself that for those who want to try out something different from the homogeneous uh, uh, fiction uh, content uh, they have uh, a choice so i think habit creation definitely it has helped uh, and uh, we are uh, offering something different uh, utilizing that habit so it's it's worked for us so then gish would you want to stick to the documentary genre per se if i have to if i have to put it for a layman that uh, is documentary is a genre is something that you would want to stick to or you would want to eventually go documentary say with uh, a lot of fiction content as well considering that is where you would see an incremental audience is coming from oh no no actually absolutely we are going to focus just on factual entertainment uh, and uh, non uh, non fiction uh, in the foreseeable future that's the whole premise of our platform and uh, see just to give you an an uh, idea about the addressable market uh, see out of the yeah. entire uh, uh, video uh, uh, viewing audience uh, in in a country like india Uh, sure. almost 80 to 90% of uh, internet users consume factual entertainment in some form or on another i mean youtube has been the driver of factual entertainment or non fiction content till now and uh, the demand for premium non fiction content is only increasing day by day and we want to be there in that space because uh, you know we we are actually owning that space in a sense that a curated premium non fiction content is something that uh is uh where we have a first mover advantage and uh, we want to leverage that strength so uh, we want to play to our strength and and you know even our network intel media uh, you know we have a history with non fiction and uh, we want to leverage that as well so then there will be a certain growth in terms of the number of content pieces that you were putting possibly say last year versus the way you would want to plan it for the next couple of years i am sure you would be thinking to scale that up absolutely we are planning to double down our uh, we have already uh, in fact initiated that process uh, compared to the tight number of video assets that we had last year this year we are on track to actually double that number and in fact to be honest we don't have any other option than the amount of uh, users that are uh, coming in and latching on to the service uh, it's like uh, you know canon fodder you need to constantly give uh, uh, new keep on adding new and new content to acquire new customers to to so what would be your point of view in terms of how the niche content is getting consumed uh, does that sound good news for you and uh, does the growth look aggressive for you as well absolutely um when we launched uh, in the fall of 2018 we never thought um you know we had we launched we entered okay. india with absolutely zero expectations we didn't know how the market is going to plan for us but we always knew that if we were to offer content which is kind of slightly different there's definitely a market it, india as a market has grown tremendously for us and we were pleasantly surprised in the first month of launch that the number of people actually started subscribing to the service um it has changed considerably the the whole matrix post pandemic because people have started valuing their time more as they're spending more time working from home they the the thin line of difference between working and not working has kind of faded away and hence you know uh, you know short short format content has fitted in very nicely you know you would like to just turn yourself off quench your entertainment thirst and get back to work and that's where you know our content has fitted in very very well because people were pleasantly surprised that you can watch a great short an oscar winning short in 10 12 minutes and then get back to your your work your day and whatever else you you want to do um this kind of format also works very well with pretty much all screen types you know whether you're watching it on a mobile or on television so i think um i would say worldwide there have been a massive surge when it comes to uh, short format content um you know e- even when we take the biggies like the youtube and all that they have now 
you know, have a dedicated um, uh, section for short. It, it's another thing that they they took our logo and we are having a lawsuit against Google. But um, it's been an exciting, exciting journey so far as far as the Asian subcontinent is concerned, and it's only going to grow. Certainly. So one question for you, Tarun, that I kind of picked up from what you were saying is uh, uh, after you, uh, Shorts came in India in 2018, it is definitely kind of grabbed a lot of eyeballs and subscriptions too. So what would be the discovery journey for a user to know about Shorts? TV, largely. I'll, I'll tell you where, from where I'm coming is for the big five and say Shamaru's of the world or Manoma's of the world, there's definitely either uh, a production house or possibly say uh, a new uh, a new spin giant backing them or the big five definitely are in the eyes of public. But for Shorts TV, what could be that uh, point where a user discovers Short TV and that could be like a good eye opener for a lot of users who wants to consume content, but they possibly have already exhausted the current platforms and they don't know how, what next to do. I must say, we need very, very good question. Okay. Uh, one is that, you know, since we are not in the big, big league, we do not have, um, I would say, the marketing dollars to kind of reach out to a much, man, uh, uh, a much more wider audience. But I would like, you know, before I start, I would just like to share a very interesting piece of stats where that if you see 98% of the films or pieces of content which are produced every year come from the indie filmmakers. Okay. Um, unfortunately, no, these filmmakers do not have the platform to sh showcase their products. Yes, there is YouTube, there is there are plenty of other um, platforms available, but discoverability always remains an issue. You know, no one is actually taking out this content and then showing people that this is what we're doing. For us, what's happened that we have given these indie uh, filmmakers a platform to showcase their products. And now they have become our, um, you, you know, they have become a face of the brand. Because as we, as we get their films on board, they use their own marketing, their own social handles, to start promoting the content. Uh, another as interesting aspect is that we are in the process of creating a community because that is very, very important. You know, one, um, since, you know, this whole webinar is about, you know, how can we personalize uh, for, you know, it's, I think the, the most important thing is to start with personalized recommendations. And these filmmakers are really uh, playing a very, very important role in doing that because they then reach out to their friends, family, and everybody then comes together. And as they come, that's where discovery happens for us. So, so this had been an interesting part of the journey for us worldwide, I would say. That's a great cue. So uh, can I safely assume that uh, the connected TV consumption for say uh, platforms like DocuBain, Shorts TV, would be much more higher than your normal OTTs, considering the, the kind of content that's getting consumed is still still slightly niche and premium. Uh, say for a normal OTT and possibly an Onka can uh, can confirm on that, but the kind of OTT uh, viewership is in the range of eight to twelve percent. Give or take, it could be uh, you know a, a bit higher or lower for a few platforms. But what would it be like for say a document shorts TV? Uh, Vinit, if uh, uh, yeah, so Vinit, you're right. Actually, uh, especially in the last two years, we have seen uh, this even uh, increase <coughs> skew towards connected TVs. Uh, and uh, you know, today I would say majority of our consumption does happen on connected TVs, and uh, probably it's got to do with our target audience uh, audience also, and their uh, 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 their profiles also. Uh, but yes, you're right. I mean, that's where the growth is happening. Um, for us, uh, I would say it's um, it, it's a 50-50 split at the moment because when we entered the market, we actually entered through a linear uh, route. Um, but then as we have now mm, actually widened our reach, uh, I would say it's, it's pretty much catching up. And the next year or so, surely um, the oh, oh, over the top is going to take over for us. 
That's a good news for uh, you know a platform like Shorts TV where we're seeing that fifty percent of the content is getting consumed on connected TV. So that's definitely an uh, uh, an interesting take in terms of uh, uh, premium or niche the content. Uh, possibly the platform or the or the medium where it's getting consumed also changes basis that. So I would I would want to ask question to everyone rather. Is there a way for you to attribute the success uh, or eventual success, be it the downloads, or uh, subscriptions, or time spent on OTTs? Like I understand the success metrics would differ basis the life stage of the OTT platform. Say if I have to give an example for an established platform like Live, it'll be different versus a Oho Gujarati, which is a new entrant. The success metric could be something else. And say somebody like a Manorama Max, who's uh, again the latest entrant, but also being backed by a Malayalam Manorama, there could be a different definition of success. So say uh, Omkal, Satyajit and Satyadeep, how would you define success uh, for your platform based the life stage it is in? So for us, uh, it's twofold. Uh, it's uh, viewing users is one metric that, uh, that definitely means uh, uh, success and the other is video views obviously so that's the currency uh, both combined uh, are are the metrics that we follow and we ensure that that's on a rise that's great so uh, Umka, one question is uh, in in that case while viewership uh, and unique visitors is something uh, that you would be, uh, would be measuring success at is time spent on important metrics for you because uh, now that you're on Big Five, you know that you've penetrated the OTT consuming audiences to a great extent. And hence, will time spent be an important metric going forward? Or will you still be seeing that, okay, maybe how I can kind of get more incremental audiences first, and then time spent could be a way of looking at it? Well, time spent is definitely an important metric for us. Uh, sure. So when we talk about, see, we are a freemium model, right? Which means that there is there is some content which is ad supported, and then there is also content which is premium and behind paywall. So uh, for the ad supported business, video views and reach is one aspect, but uh, there is also the time spent, which also means that the user is engaged more with the brand and with the content, and uh, which also means that there is more inventory that is generated for our ads business. On the on the premium side, uh, video duration consumption counts because uh, that also talks about the quality of content that we are creating. That also talks about how uh, engaged the subscribed user is, and you know that much more potential of retention. So, uh, from a time spent perspective, in both the aspects, it's definitely important. So, will it be number of content pieces a user is consumed? Will that be important? Considering you come with say multiple originals, so. Uh... In, in a given month, and you would want to see that how many of them are getting picked up by the subscribe users as well. Uh, of course, so uh, there is definitely uh, uh, every each and every type of content attracts different audiences. Uh, there is there is definitely an overlap between the audiences, uh, but uh, yeah, you know uh, there will be users who would definitely once we have uh, you know so from from a a premium subscription perspective, we have yearly subscriptions also. So you will see that those users, even monthly subscribers would come and consume various different types of content originals. And then we also try to cross pollinate between the other content that we have on the platform. But there is definitely repeat consumption that happens across different genres of content. So how that would be for Soya Deep in terms of Oho Gujarati? It's a new latest entrant, if I have to say, uh, amongst the platforms, but definitely has like a rich regional content that is out there. Hey, Vinny. So uh, yes, it's just been a year since we launched. Uh, so I think we're the new kid on the block, if you could say that. Uh, for us, um, of course, for, as for any S4 platform, the final metric is subscriptions. Uh, but at this moment, honestly, what we would want to concentrate on is content reach and time spent on the platform. Uh, those are two metrics we are monitoring closely, uh, which eventually would, you know, uh, decrease our churn and increase subscription in the long run. Uh, but right now we are completely concentrating on content reach and uh, yeah, time spent on the platform stickiness. Got it, got it. And for you, Satyajit, how you would uh, get, say, um, Manoma, Malayalam Manoma backing you in a way that people, uh, there's already a credibility built and then how it's getting translated to, uh, you know, uh, people coming to your platform and is that the measure of success for you? 
Yeah, so for Manorma Max, we have uh, content coming in. I mean, we have users coming in to watch the news content. There are users coming in to watch the entertainment content of the entertainment channel Marvel Manorma. And there is also a, a group of viewers who come in to watch the uh, web series that we have created originally for the Manorma Max viewers. Uh, initially, there was not much of traction between these different uh, viewers. Uh, our success right now is on engaging these viewers internally so that a viewer coming in to watch a news content is also offered uh, uh, the uh, cinema and the uh, entertainment content on Marvel Manorba and also the web series that we have. And we are, uh, if you are able to engage him, that is the measure of uh, success at this point in time for us. So, general, I can safely assume that uh, what you're still saying is even for somebody who's uh, as large as Sony Live to a newest entrant, reach all, say, unique visitors on the platform would always be the number one goal. And then we can look at, say, either time spent or the number of content pieces a user has picked would be second. So, reach is definitely going to be that first uh, measure of success. Now, there's a question on, uh, because considering we were also talking about how regional content is getting consumed or news are getting consumed. Uh, this is a question to Satyajit and Kinnavi, that what kind of regional content uh, do we have uh, compared to the big fives or the pan India OTT has? And uh, is it a matter of concern or we are still uh, confident that the content that we have, uh, regional content that we have, is uh, still strong enough to kind of create its own foothold. We have always marketed ourselves as the number one Malayalam OTT platform. So we are <coughs> proud of the fact that we are just Malayalam content because we are able to bring in the richness of the Malayalam content that is already here. We are not dependent on the kind of content that is created outside uh, the Malayalam universe. So, uh, and most of the users are not so familiar with the content outside Kerala, while they might be watching some of the other OTT platforms and they're getting engaged with it, we are uh, quite happy engaging with them with the content we have and we, uh, we are uh, encouraging users from other uh, geographies also to come in and watch by putting in subtitles and stuff like that so that there is more content consumption of original Malayalam content. We, we are not getting lost into an array of content uh, in a you know uh, boxed as a large indian ott platform we are much uh, happier showcasing all the content we have as a malayalam only ott platform so do you keep a track of uh, the length and breadth of content that the other otts have because why i'm asking this is yes, uh, while okay i'm sure so that will be one of the uh, bone of contentions of kind of upping your game in terms of more content coming on the platform Kinnari, will it be same for you? Like we, uh, as you rightly said initially, that Gujarati is one language that you guys have mastered and uh, kind of created a lot of content. Now there's somebody like an Oho Gujarati as well on the panel. Uh, how would you look at Oho Gujarati in terms of uh, a native Gujarati uh, language platform versus uh, Shemaru, which has other content as well as definitely a good chunk of uh, content in Gujarati as well? So, uh, very over the last year, uh, like we said, we've been building our regional, we are upping our regional game and we started with building uh, the Gujarati because the, there was affinity towards the brand, the loyalty, etc. So today I can fairly say uh, that, you know, the, uh, the amount of number of hours that we have on Gujarati uh, catalog on Shamaru, me as a platform cannot be competed by even an Amazon or a Netflix or the other big five that we are talking, right? So we are entering a regional, we are making sure we have the right to win and we win that regional game at the end of, uh, you know, from start to finish because all of us know uh, from numbers like, you know, uh, every subscriber today, has about 2.4 to 2.5 OTTs, uh, you know, that's the ratio. Absolutely. So, of course, what we are looking at is, okay, we're not, there will be a big five before us, but then there's that 1.4 that we want to fit into, right? Uh -huh. And that's the matrix we are targeting and uh, uh, going there to going achieve and acquiring that. Concept. 
so for soya deep uh, again as kinnari said that uh, while there could be say uh, amazons of the world and say sony lives of the world who are creating a lot of content and say regional content would also be a part but not like a mainstay for them so for you considering that you are largely confined to a gujarati audiences what would be a growth road map for you and how would you say uh, you know uh, look at a uh, shema who creating a lot of gujarati content and possibly being a part of that 1.4 1.5 otts that they're talking about so as kenari rightly mentioned uh, you know the library the lives i mean the number of hours of content is Uh, not matchable, uh, but where we are concentrating is uh, the number of originals we release. Uh, so in the last twelve months, we have done about uh, two originals, and uh, that we feel is uh, to concentrate on that. Uh, apart from that, uh, being local here, we would want to reach into tier two and tier three cities, uh, where your Hindi and English may not be the primary language of communication or the preferred language of communication, and uh, that is where we would want to reach. So. Yeah, it is original content and uh, reach only to type this. Perfect. So, so yeah, they as you rightly touched upon something which is you know how a penetration can go in tier two, tier three cities, which also increases uh, say uh, a user base for a regional platform. Plus, it uh, basically it it helps you to kind of disseminate content which is more closer to the audiences in these markets. So with a big portion of OTT growth coming from tier two, tier three, where customer engagement in local languages are necessity, conversational AI in multiple languages can definitely aid OTT brands not just reach a wider audience but also drive uh, brand loyalty. So what are your views and how do you have any as in do you have any experiences that you can share on this webinar? So uh, sure. So uh, we have. Uh... realized over a period of time that you know people would want to communicate in gujarati for us like uh, because we are from gujarat and we, our audience would want to communicate in that language uh, with localization of language even content reach and discovery becomes easier uh, we haven't reached there we haven't we don't have that facility on the platform right now but we are definitely concentrating towards um, that and uh, in the next 6 months we do have plans to really go local and go gujarati with our communication on the platform and off the platform which i think will help us reach tier three cities where uh, language is a barrier and uh, apart from that even habit formation is an issue there so that is also something we are working on certainly certainly so anybody on the panel uh, who can kind of talk about uh, if they've developed chatbots within their businesses in the past also a uh, reason being it only feeds in as an inspiration for platforms like oh gujarati in terms of what is the best way to approach it uh, so we have done a bit of um, efforts of building one trying to explore a way to build conversation paths specifically around support and discovery pieces but uh, i don't believe that the success metric that we defined was the most appropriate one it was more to understand how this can be utilized by a user rather than making it a uh, you know an offering to the end user as of now okay because what so i believe like is the... understanding the idea of how to go about doing things rather than you know making it a product ready for now true I would uh, just. Sorry, um, no, no, please, please. Oh, fine. So I just want to add here is, um, and I think it 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 sort of holds true much more in our domain because the kind of content that we offer and uh, it's it, it's sort sort of niche. So of course we 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 do not not everybody is our target audience, but here here formation of uh, you know you know tools like this make a huge amount of difference, uh, and just at the expense of repeating myself for us. you know i would say community building has been now our number one um kra in terms of because we want to build a community of film buffs yeah. people who actually identify with uh, great filmmaking and and who also feel that you know there is a filmmaker in themselves 
And as you see that, you know, when we look at the example of YouTube, the amount of original content which is being created. So obviously it doesn't need any rocket science for you to start creating content. Um, but we just want to give people a platform to sort of start discussing what they, what, what they feel about a certain kind of film. And that gives a filmmaker a lot of uh, encouragement. You know, we are in, at the moment building a platform where um, our users would be you know, able to interact through our app live while they're watching the film. If they want to show their token of appreciation to a filmmaker, they can actually support the filmmaker, e either donate if the film is for a cause, or maybe just show a to token of appreciation to the filmmaker. So I suppose, you know, this, this is, um, you know, that's where, you know, we are kind of, it, it, it's kind of, you know, it, in our, we are pushing it as film three or web three, where it gets even more interactive. Uh, back in May this year, we actually launched our own community, which is called the Shorties, uh, which was at the Cannes Film Festival. And it's all about building that community, giving uh, filmmakers as well as viewers a platform where they can come and interact. And then that itself is gonna give you know, brands an additional window to monetize and give, give their viewers more power. Absolutely. That, 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 that's a great used case because it is not just consumer forward, but it is also kind of, uh, as in it's not from an experiential point of view, but it also drives business at the end of it. So um, we've recently uh, deployed a workflow on WhatsApp. And sure. what we've been uh, seeing at as a result is most of the users uh, prefer channel uh, to reach out to us have now be has now become whatsapp you know so yeah. th there are two things that is transactional in nature and it is consumption led so of course uh, while we're trying to bring into the platform increased stickiness again whatsapp has become the medium for us uh, but, you know, there is that thin line uh, on conversational because of the typing skills of our users, you know, our general language skills, you know, the conversational, uh, the AI driven conversational can reach up to an X point, after which we do require a lot of human uh, back in support to handhold all of these because even the queries, etc. So I think until in India, conversational AI is not voice driven. I think India is a long way. For most of the countries outside India, conversational AI on basis of written uh, communication has done wonderfully. We've not been able to replicate that in India for sure, but I think a solution around uh, voice-like conversational AI is something uh, which will propel this vertical for us. You know, it's a very uh, brilliant observation where uh, written text can only do something, you know, it can't go beyond a certain point and especially in India where uh, considering there are so many languages, it will be very difficult, like uh, in the countries abroad, English largely or say European countries would have their own languages, but within India per se, you would have so many languages, so it will be difficult to build a conversational AI which has a feed in as a voice. So Sanjay, you would want to throw some light in terms of how this could be done, how we possibly can leverage it through a voice as a medium as well? Yeah, certainly. So first of all, uh, you know, I was I'm fascinated uh, so far with the conversation, just learning so much about the OTT industry. I represent OTT more from a consumer standpoint, uh, but I think to answer your question, I think uh, you know uh, the observation of Kinari is uh, spot on. But like any any space, uh, right? Things evolve and things only get better and better. Now. Uh, because we are on the language piece uh, currently, so I think you know at the back end, I mean, teaching a machine uh, a language is hard, right? For us humans, only if I have to pick up, I am a Bengali. If I have to pick up Gujarati, it will be hard, right? Now think of doing this for a machine. It is a hard problem that the technology guys like us are trying to solve. But the good news is that uh, you know things have been evolving and they are evolving at a very very rapid pace. 
So uh, till maybe two years back, the way AI used to handle this language problem was all about doing translation. So yeah. let's say someone you know sends a message, whether it's text or voice, um, you know, in a local language, let's say Gujarati. Uh, the first thing it will do is it will translate Gujarati to English because traditionally English models are the best, right? Easier to it will it's, it's easier to understand and there is a lot of data uh, available, right? Yeah. Wikipedia exactly. is all in English, right? Do we have a Wikipedia translated in Gujarati, in Malayalam, in Bengali? The answer is no. And that's where the training data comes in, right? So two years back, that was the de facto model, uh, right? Where the... Uh, thing first gets translated to English, then the interpretation happens, and then it's again translated back into the original language and thrown back to the user. The good news is that there has been a tremendous amount of investments from governments, educational institutes, and the like. So today we have language models uh, which are natively trained on the local languages. And especially for the Indian languages, things have moved quite fast. It is not there yet, probably, like, uh, you know, many of us already agree to it. But uh, between two years back and now, there has been a significant uh, movement and it's only going to get better. And the more businesses adopt this solution, uh, you know, because there is always a human uh, fallback option. I think, Kinari, you mentioned it just now, right? That, uh, and that is how it will probably be for some more time. But with that fallback option, you know, more and more we see businesses adopt these solutions, the quality of the experience on the language side will also get better. Yeah, ju just to add, you know, like, uh, for example, we built conversational models while I was, I was working with Hangama, yeah. largely deployed on the Alexa platform, you know, where we did that both for English and Hindi. And at that point, we've been closing working with Lex, which is the back end of Alexa, closely sure. working with the Thirteens in Seattle. I think, uh, but the amount of uh, training and data that was fed into Lex was phenomenal at that point in time. Hmm. And uh, the what we've seen is, you know, we've just seen these giants make that initiative for languages that originate from this country. We've not seen, uh, you know, large, you know, corporations out here who've had those training models on. So that's point one. Another thing is most of us, what I've, I've seen in consumers is they, like for even a Hindi speaking consumer, he's not speaking Hindi, he's not speaking English. Yeah. He's probably speaking English. English. Right, so he's probably English, speaking true. English, which is a mix of both. He's even conversing in WhatsApp or other true. mediums in that. And thirdly, you know, which technology, uh, you know, goalposts changing every year. The consumer, when he's opening our apps, he's like, Are inko to sab aana you know, so the perception true, true. of the consumer is technology is advanced to so much level that. We should just understand. <laughs> and that, that's the fear that holds us back on saying, is it ready to give it out to the consumer? Because uh, the consumer's expectations are top notch when yeah. it comes to See, that's the where entertainment I, vertical, their expectations are top notch, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, it, at, at the end of the day, you know, that's where I keep coming back and telling my clients, uh, Kinari, that, you know, uh, it's important to choose the use case. Uh, right, which use case do you want to deploy these solutions in and where you do not want to, right? So think of, you know, a, a simple use case, we are talking about big volume numbers of all of your businesses going up, pandemic led, etc. I'm sure the support calls have also gone up with maybe very simple things like, hey, I want to renew my subscription. I mean, I was myself um, had the struggle and it was so hard to reach out to my OTT choice, uh, you know, platform of choice to just get this subscription thing fixed, right? Now those, can those be the use cases where you start off with, um, right? And uh, again, one of our customers without naming them, a you know, very simple use case was, you know, my call volumes in the call center. Uh, if my agents are busy, can I deflect those calls to WhatsApp? where I move the customer from the phone to WhatsApp. And I think we all agree that in India, WhatsApp is the de facto channel. 
where you know your agents are probably able to handle 100 customers or maybe 20 customers at the yeah. same shop um, right so choosing the use case is i think where uh, we need to figure out and you will choose it for yourself at the same time you know uh, this medium whatsapp hasn't reached economies of scale when it comes to pricing right if I have to do it on other platforms, etc., and I need to deflect large volumes uh, to that, say, notifications evolved, and, you know, the amount of money that I spend on notification has drastically come down over, say, a decade. Okay. But WhatsApp is not there, you know. So then for a banking or a transactional-led uh, universe, it is much, I mean, the ROI is very huge. But uh, for an entertainment led, uh, whether, you know, the volume, the scale and, you know, the ROI is something we, we are still, you know, saying, how much is it going to add to the KPIs? So, can I, can we say that it, it possibly uh, is still far away from replacing a person who is at a call center answering your query versus this? Uh, conversational AI, it could be on the platform, it could be on WhatsApp, but still uh, resolves your problem in the same way. Maybe more comfortable way because then you, uh, as a consumer, will still have an option to even uh, possibly raise a query in the midnight and it gets solved versus a call center person or a support team would only work for, only work in the working hours. So I think I would say that as a platform, we haven't tried away uh from WhatsApp at this point, right? We reach our users both uh, for consumption and transaction on WhatsApp. At this yeah. point, while we are in this phase, we're still figuring out a lot of maths. Maybe by the end of this financial year, we'll have a numbers cleared. We'll have saying, okay, if this is the kind of investment we are making on conversational led platforms, uh, what is the ROI? Today, I would say, we have not shied away we've deployed and we'll experiment and we'll have some answers by the end of the year perfect Lokesh, if i have to understand for a platform like Evasta, what could be the used cases from a conversational ai point of view considering uh, you have a bank of movies that possibly very few uh, partners or uh, you know ott platforms would have As I explained earlier, we went through um, an exercise to understand what use cases will work for us. And as explained eloquently by Kinnery, um, what we also observed is this technology of conversing isn't most, what you would say, friendly for a market like India. It is good to do if you want to just do support. Uh, but then it's a very generic use case. And in case of support, uh, the amount of investment was not that high. So we can basically go for that route. Uh, but apart from it, uh, not really. You know, and we tried enabling search and discovery and rails and all the other possible things that a user typically goes through while trying to do um, actions on their phone or TV. Uh, but the contextual overhead was too much. Um, even somebody, uh, as what you would say, uh, well versed with the aspect of the product as me, I found it too troublesome to use. And I said, no, this is not a product which is ready for mass consumption. It's good to do investment on part of research and see what cases will it solve. But I don't think the evolution has reached to the point this product is ready for, for masses. Yeah. Oh, so let me just add, uh, if I may just add, like uh, when you say conversational AI, it seems like a, uh, the user sends something and somebody responds immediately, that kind of conversation. But uh, the uh, fact that we have this technology, it has helped us to understand the users much better by capturing what they, they are doing and then sending back messages as per that. So if you consider this as a, uh, and it is an AI backed uh, solution. So if this is a, uh, is the kind of conversational AI that you're talking about, then it definitely works. Because uh, today we send notifications to different users, depending on how they are uh, 
uh, interacting with the uh, content and uh, to get them back to watch some new content that is on and everything. Based on this, uh, totally, and we have a platform partner who does it. But uh, if this is the way it has to be done, then it is definitely working because they are, we are able to push one-sided Malayalam messages and English text to them, which is sure. worded correctly and, uh, you know, they, they get it, they understand it and they respond. If that is the way it, it needs to work, yeah, it is already working for us. But otherwise, yeah, like uh, most of the panelists have been sharing, it doesn't make sense on a conversation basis in a day-to-day -day, uh, kind of scenario. Yeah. So I'll just can I add, sorry. sorry, please. Yeah. No, so, um, you know, we also, uh, like what Kindari mentioned, we also have tried, uh, you know, we also implemented a WhatsApp workflow for, uh, uh, in a conversational uh, uh, fashion, a chatbot. Uh, as of now, the use cases are mostly support related. But what we are definitely doing is, uh, you know, having a marketing angle to it, which means that will be marketing use cases to a ready user base, uh, and we can tap into that. Uh, plus, we will have a discovery and uh, you know yeah. e-commerce. Also, if we uh, uh, that's something that we are planning. Uh, so, some of those use cases are also you know in our in our roadmap to, to be supported in a conversational uh, format. And and I personally believe that there is a lot of potential in that that medium where uh, you immediately are able to respond to the user uh, uh, and yeah. and personalize it for uh, for that user's choice. So content discovery is definitely an important aspect for OTT platform, which has wide area of content, the content. So it could be in terms of genres that a person would want to see versus uh, a language a person would want to see, or maybe it could also be a starting point would be the kind of content. It could be a, a GEC show, it could be, a sporting event versus an original on OTT, uh, you definitely can start that conversation on uh, uh, with the conversational AI, and then it can lead to an eventual content discovery that a person would not do possibly a manual uh, in a manual approach. Uh, so, Girish, would uh, a conversational AI work in a similar way for you, where we're still talking about a slightly more evolved audiences uh, question to Tarun as well? From oh, a yes, discovery sir. point of view. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, see, uh, ultimately, your previous, I mean, this, uh, I mean, we've heard a lot about uh, uh, the challenges of conversational uh, messaging sure. uh, over the last uh, 20 minutes or 25 minutes. And uh, uh, I think there are a lot of opportunities as well. And uh, just to put some color and context to what I'm going to share is that uh, your earlier question that what are the, you know, maybe the best metrics for uh, OTT platforms? Uh, yeah. So I would say for, for, I mean, any platform, uh, the churn rate, uh, which I, I, I think uh, is, is a very important plat uh, metrics, uh, low churn rate is uh, very important, uh, especially for SWOT platforms, uh, and especially for platforms which have been there for two to three years, and now they have a significant subscriber base, but they want to uh, also ensure that they renew. So to... Uh, to keep a good, uh, a very less churn rate, uh, the average watch time needs to be high. Uh, the engagement needs to be high. And for that, uh, the customers uh, need to be attended to in a very prompt manner. And that brings us to the advantages of deployment of uh, conversational uh, messaging. And uh, in fact, we use a solution from one of the sp uh, sponsor of, of this uh, webinar. Uh, and uh, we've been using that for for quite some time now. And uh, uh, I would, I, I mean, I'm happy to share that almost 60% of our uh, customer support queries are now self-resolved uh, by the users uh, after the deployment of the tool. And uh, if uh, for a platform like DocuBay, if uh, which you know is a vertical OTT and which caters to a, a, a you know. A broad segment, but still not the uh, uh, you know uh, not it doesn't have the scale of that of a big five. For us, for us, if it can make such a big difference, then I think for a lot of larger platforms and larger OTT context, uh, even a reduction of thirty to forty percent of queries to customer support, where some use cases like uh, uh, FAQs or uh, some uh, uh, pre uh, uh, some technical support uh, related questions 
or uh, some uh, maybe promo code redemption uh, related questions or some payment related issues if a customer can self serve uh, himself uh, a resolution uh, that really helps a lot to reduce costs of manpower of uh, people manning customer support and that also increases the turnaround time so i mean 24/7 you're available uh, you don't need to keep anyone in sh uh, uh, shifts and uh, you know instant query resolution so i think from a customer support perspective uh, conversational ai has been very beneficial for us at least uh, and from a marketing and push perspective um, i mean personally it's just my opinion uh, i personally find it a bit too pushy to send uh, messages because currently sms has been spammed a lot i mean we all receive hundreds of sms's every day and we don't want that to happen on whatsapp and instagram and telegram as well so i think i would be very cautious as a brand to push stuff through conversational messaging but i would definitely want to resolve the queries of uh, you know my customers through uh, uh, this medium perfect um I would like to add here is that while I echo uh, uh, whatever Girish just said, um, I mean, surely when it comes to support, conversational AI plays a huge amount of role. But I think, um, you know, the main difference between OTT and linear TV is OTT is very, I would say, first person led. It, it's very personal. It's very personal. Linear is a very, very passive, and I'm sure you know we're we're not getting into a debate here with this. But the reason I'm using this because it actually gives you an opportunity to reach out to each and every subscriber, address them with them, where address them with their first name, and then start. And, and this can then help you with offering personalized recommendations. Um, it can also then help you to reduce the churn because then you can, you know, start pushing personalized offers, uh, which would then help you to for retention as well as upselling as well because you know exactly what your subscriber has been watching, how much they're watching. Perhaps they watch this, and then we need to add this to it, and that is going to play a hu huge amount of role. I I understand that you know technology only can take you. To a certain extent, but it's it's evolving. It's evolving on, on a daily basis, and I guess we would reach a stage where it, it it's going to be hand in hand. And you know, perhaps we, we can deploy our resources somewhere where we don't need to you know personally answer queries. So I think people like to be addressed as first person. So it would be great if if somebody just send me a, a message and say, hey, Taryn, this is great. You know, good, good, good to see you this morning. I hope you enjoyed watching the Oscar shot last night. And then that kind of, you know, makes people connect to the brand and, and that is going to play a huge, massive role. Certainly, that's, that's a definitely valid point where it also adds to the user experience and not just... Uh, on the back of the content, but also on the back of the service that's being provided additionally to the users. Uh, Sanjay, you would want to have any closing notes on conversational AI, and then we can move on to a few questions on OTT front as well. How you would want this to be perceived in the coming years, and how what is the scope of work that can be done to make it robust and more adaptive uh, with the OTT platforms? Yeah, so I think you know I'll probably add two points here. I totally, um, I totally, uh, you know, echo the sentiments expressed. So one is I think it is proven that conversational AI adds immense value on the customer support side, right? So, and uh, that's that's a big piece of the OTT business, especially with rising users, um, you know, and giving them them that experience and the personalized uh, attention. Uh, I think where it needs to evolve, and that is what we coming from the technology industry, we work every day, day in, day out, is I think to address some of the points which Lokesh uh, talked about, right? That, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's about understanding the end user and uh, making sure that you are, uh, you know, you are able to understand not just the end user and the preference, but also the context in which the user is interacting with you and then give relevant answers. I think the good part is that you know, as every tech industry, we are slowly seeing verticalization emerging as well. So, you know, 
be at least in gupshap and uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, you know industry uh, trends that we see is within conversational ai you are seeing the uh, emergence of vertical specific solutions emerging which means that uh, you know there would be um, ai models uh, you know which is first trained on the language let's say which is let's say gujarati but then uh, you know the next level of intelligence comes from the same model is now aware of the ott domain as well right so uh, when you talk about a piece of content what are those relevant attributes of that content which a customer will typically talk about the ai model is trying to understand knows before and then uh, is able to understand the context and give relevant response um so again it's not there yet in the shape and form we all want it to but i think um, tarun mentioned that te- technology is changing every day uh, and sooner than later you will have those solutions as well so <laughs> helping enterprises on the revenue side would be what you would start seeing um you know uh, in a big way going forward amazing it's so uh, one of the questions to omkar this is again coming back to the ott in the tourist form how do we look at tvod uh, as a buying model will it be parallel to theatrical release in times to come that's something that's uh, already been experimented by few movies and it looks like a way forward uh, at least from an early access for a movie uh, on an ott platform but uh, in years to come do you see sony live per se uh, indulging in uh, tvod as a buying uh, format and at an overall ott level do you feel renting would be like a big business shift that happens so uh, from an industry perspective yes there are there are several ott platforms that are uh, using the tvod model and sony live in its previous avatar was also uh, using that model but uh, in the current uh, space that we are uh, i don't think uh, that the economics works for us in terms of the acquisition cost of the content the acquisition the user acquisition cost uh, so it's better to retain that user for a longer period with a subscription instead of having a one time purchase and a one time consumption uh, from from that sense so uh, from a, uh, if you are in a tvod model then you will continuously need uh, some or the other title to be acquired and you know you retain that user in that fashion uh, so for us uh, as of now it's subscription uh, uh, model that that really works for us. yes uh, we it, it really works for us uh, from a notice uh, uh, from a uh, web series and original perspective also that really makes sense to retain that user for a longer period um, and uh, but but never say never you know probably probably sometime later down the line uh, we could experiment with tvod certainly so question to lokesh uh, considering uh, you know there are a lot of uh, so youtube was the first platform which actually came with movies on rent and then uh, say a few other platforms also latched it up now considering uh, eros as a platform has a lot of movies already there do you want to explore renting as one of the medium so then subscription is only way out for you Um, uh, Ross has been in the business for far longer than most of the guys. Um, I can tell you that we started off as an India broad renting the movies digitally model. Uh, so we did that way back in 2012, 13, 14 sort of a phase. And that is what basically culminated into the idea of bringing this as an sword service we are aware that sword as a platform has a much more what you would say friction free approach for users india indulging in payment on a whole I'm, I'm, i come from creating a payments back in background i can tell you it's very tough engaging with people and payment problems in india on a whole you would rather be you know better off getting them a nominal subscription which is recurring without their actions involved fair so then uh, that that's a, a good direction for a lot of uh, consumers as well that while uh, this has been one of the uh, buying currencies but again a long time subscription would be something that is here to stay while uh, a tvod as a model could could be uh, available for few, on few of the platforms a uh, one question that is uh, i represent agencies 
and uh, one thing that i feel uh, and this will be largely say omkar could take this up is the level of data available on for tv is immense in terms of say a bark as a body uh, you have a complete transparency across channels across networks now on otts the discrepancy between say comscore or app any uh and the claim data by the the ott partners there, there is definitely a level of discrepancy which comes out in in picture right and then what would be the reason of that and how we can possibly uh, go behind trusting say the numbers that are given by the ott partners or the claim numbers per se so uh, i think it, if there has to be any standard that has to be defined then firstly we need to standardize the way we are each of the ott platforms measures uh, data uh different odd platforms measure time spent differently uh, uh sessions differently what are maus and so on so forth uh so i think there will be definitely a standardization that is required if uh, and and some central body like ima or, or or whichever will have to take that stand and then buy in from from the other odd brands the bigger odd brands uh, uh you know and and uh once that once we have that standardization uh then probably the next step would be to get that data uh and avoid that resistance from the ott brands to be op- able to you know openly share that data with those brands uh i think uh, that would that would be a challenge so do you think uh, omkar say live as one of the largest ott would uh, would be happier to kind of come in agreement with say a body like Uh, I may I and say that okay, we we should normalize this or regularize this for the good of uh, you know at an industry level. Uh, sure, I don't see that as uh, as a challenge upfront, but <coughs> I'm sure there are a lot of legalities and regulations that one has to uh, abide by. And if as an industry we decide that we want to uh, standardize this, then then definitely. I guess uh, Bark had also started a discussion on yes. ECAM, ECAM coming in picture, but uh, that didn't take off the way it was expected. Hence, yes. that would have standardized a lot of things within the OTT space. Yes. So uh, it was amazing discussing uh, with this panel, uh, largely giving a good insight in terms of how OTT business has turned up post pandemic. What are the nuances and how possibly we can look this to take off in the years to come. So I, I believe there are three takeaways that I would uh, I would largely take from this discussion is the SWOT business will, will largely go on the back of the OTT original. So that's one definite roadmap for the OTT platforms if they have to grow their subscription uh, original content would be a definite bit that they can look at. Second is from a regional point of view, regional content uh, partners. Uh, are confident enough, and that is definitely uh, you know that comes out that regional content will be strongly consumed by tier two, tier three audiences than say a, a, a Hindi content or say a pan India content. So there is definitely a room and headspace for the regional OTTs to kind of grow within the ecosystem. And third is uh, as we as we largely discussed on the conversational AI. Uh, while definitely there are few used cases uh, in English and for the evolved audiences, definitely a case that. Uh, Uh, Satyajit called out from a Malayalam uh, audience point of view, but largely, if you have to make this as a success at a regional language level point of view, there is a roadmap and uh, a definite uh, work that is charted out for the tech partners how they can kind of make this an enable uh, a conversational AI, not just in English uh, but across languages to enhance the user experience. uh closing define uh, this is for all the speakers over here define the journey of ott in one word till now and what do you see uh, ott becoming in next 5 years two words from each of you uh, i think it's personal entertainment uh, i think i would uh, the two words would be personal and entertainment <laughs> sure i think uh, till now uh, the journey has so far are been scale right all of us have seen humongous scale over the past uh, you know the day geo launched in this country and going further i think i would second uh, you know omkar saying it is personalized entertainment i'll go next next uh, i would use two words as enriching the journey um uh, and for the future i would say it would become essential really 
Uh, I'm actually so words. The future is here. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I would say more power to the customer and the viewer. And the viewer. Fair, fair. Viewer can never be out of the scheme of things. So I, I, I get the context. Sure. I would say focus on uh, high engagement. I think it's all about uh, the two way engagement. Perfect. Awesome. For so, us, so uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, for us, been, uh, for, uh, uh, this journey so far has been personalized entertainment. The future is uh, regional. Certainly, certainly. Really, as that a was... consumer, it is for me, it is a lifesaver. I can't imagine <laughs> pandemic without the OTT being available. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> Thank you guys. So be the big round of applause for all these folks over here. Uh, also responsible for the entertainment that we had during the pandemic. And also creating OTT as one of the largest mediums after say TV for consuming uh, content, a large form content. So while YouTube definitely is one of the largest platforms, but it has short form content, all types of content. But when it comes to a fictional content or document led content, documentary led content, or even say an entertainment led content, uh, I guess OTT is our pioneer and definitely created a room for itself in the entire content consuming space across not just digital, but across say TV and cinemas as well. So over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh... Sorry, if you can hear me, all of you. Yes, well, uh, thank you, Keith, and for summing it up so beautifully and for moderating it. And thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us on this discussion, which was uh, an E4M Gupship joint webinar on building OTT brands through personalized conversational messaging. A lot of takeaways from this, and we are already getting a lot of messages. Uh, from our social handles and we will pass on that feedback but thanks once again for joining us today